As photographers, we all know that a good lens can make all the difference in final image quality. And that's why we invest in good glass. But it's a little bit more complicated when you're buying a fixed lens camera or a camera that already has a lens attached. That's the only lens you're ever gonna get. Well, some of these cameras, the lenses are just plain bad and some they're just okay. But over my years of testing these kinds of cameras, I've made a list of ones that have really stood out to me as cameras that come with exceptional pieces of glass. And we'll start off affordable with the Olympus C8080. This is a camera I recently picked up and it is blowing me away with its lens quality. Olympus said at the time of release that it was built to the quality of their DSLR lenses, their highest level lenses. And I have no doubt in that after using it. Spec wise, it's a 28 to 140 millimeter equivalent lens with F2.4 at the wide end, all the way down to F3.5 at the long end. There's a macro and a super macro mode that lets you get pretty close to your subject. And beyond the specs overall, it's just a sharp, lovely lens at all apertures and ranges. Now, if you're more of a Canon fan, then you're in luck because Canon also made a compact bridge camera that actually rivals the Olympus C8080's lens performance. The Canon PowerShot Pro 1 was the first non-SLR camera to feature a lens with the famous Canon L-Series designation, and it's no joke. It's a 28 to 200 millimeter equivalent F2.4 to F3.5, like the Olympus C8080s, but it has an even closer super macro mode, and the lens is just great all around. Sharp, high contrast, beautiful images. The whole package is just a joy to use, and it's thanks in large part to this incredible lens. Going from well-known camera manufacturer to unknown, this next camera is from Sigma. Now you may already know Sigma for their exceptional lenses, but they also made cameras. One series of cameras they made was called the Depre Quattro series, and this series has four cameras, each with their own prime lens ranging from 21 to 71 millimeter equivalent. The only one that I've ever used before is the one I have right now, which is the Sigma DP3 Quattro. That's the 75 millimeter F2.8 lens version, and it is absolutely stunning. It's sharp, there's tons of 3D pop, which I don't even know what that means. My subjects just pop out of the image. Everything looks so real, lifelike, and sharp. There's tons of contrast even when shooting against the light. Yeah, it's just a really good lens. The next camera that has an exceptional lens comes from a collaboration between Sony and the lens manufacturer Carl Zeiss, who are always in cahoots together, and they were in it again for the Sony R1. This is an impressive bridge camera in and of itself with a huge APS-C size sensor, but what makes this camera such a catch is definitely the lens. It's a 24 to 120 millimeter equivalent lens, f2.8 to f4.8. It's got sharpness across the range, across apertures, no perceivable large flaws, and it just performs great. The original reviewer of this camera on DP Review even went out of their way to say that this lens was worth the cost of the camera alone. And especially with today's prices, yeah, I would agree with that. This next camera and lens combination is arguably the best, in my opinion, and I'm not the only one who thinks that. The Ricoh GR is an APS-C pocket camera, and that alone is an amazing feat. So this is the same sensor as the Sony we just saw, but a way more compact camera. It's just unreal. But what makes this camera really special, in my opinion, is the 28 millimeter equivalent F2.8 prime lens that is just insanely good. The results consistently feel like the sharpest, contrastiest, most lifelike images coming out of this lens. It's the best lens I've ever used. If you want to know more about any one of these cameras in particular, then check out this playlist here. I'll leave my in-depth reviews in there for you to watch. And until next time, as always, happy snapping.